So happy 2023, everybody. This is uh, Fridays with Feldman, and uh, we have a new beginning of the year. So I thought we'd start off this year again with scoliosis. We've discussed scoliosis in the past, but I think this is a great opportunity for you to introduce my new partner, Dr. Arun Hariharan, who comes, uh, by the way, of West Coast of Florida most recently and has joined us um, to do really to specialize in scoliosis. So we're going to talk about you know, the curves of scoliosis, we all know what it is. It means that you have a curvature of your spine. And we're not going to give a lecture about this. But we're going to talk about some of the new, the newer adaptations. And Dr. Harry Harn is going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about some of the safety issues that we have. So in treating this. So we know, I know Dr. Harry Harn can go through this too. What is scoliosis? We know it's a curvature of the spine. Um, and it has different severities. And we talk about it in terms of degrees. That it's, you know, it's a measure, basically measured in an angle. And it can be very severe, like the picture on your right. And it could also be different types. Like it could be, we discussed this in the past. You could be born with this and the building blocks are not okay. It could be from the fact that you have some neuromuscular disorder like cerebral palsy. It could be that you have, that people have something like pseudoachondroplasia, like a skeletal dysplasia. But most commonly, and we're talking about today, it's, we don't know what causes it. It's idiopathic. And so this is congenital, meaning that the, the building blocks are not okay. And then sometimes you have neuromuscular, like in this case, where it's where the, just the having very spastic muscles causes the scoliosis. Prater Willie would be in that, osteogenesis imperfecta, Marfan syndrome, all those would be, and they're pretty common in our practice. But the most common is we don't know why it's caused, and that's called idiopathic. And that's what I'm going to, and then I'm just going to talk about just some of the newer things about treatment of this and about evaluation of it. So the first thing we do is we look at patients and we say, do they have scoliosis or not? But this, then we have to get an x-ray, okay? We, we can evaluate you, we look for prominences, we look for asymmetries, the pediatrician does that, we do that, and then we get an x-ray. But we really don't want to expose, and this is mostly young women, to x-rays uh, and too much radiation. So the EOS machine is a machine that is like one twelfth the radiation exposure of the body to the patient. And we have that now here in the clinic, so no one has to go anywhere else. And basically obtain this specialized x-ray, which is one twelfth to one twentieth the radiation of a plain x-ray. So it's probably less than flying from Florida to California in terms of radiation exposure. And you try to do it again as infrequently as possible, but it's much safer for patients to have. And then I guess is to show, do we get an MRI? Yes, often beforehand we get an MRI to make sure that the spinal cord is normal or abnormal. And then we're gonna, so then in terms of when we get to treatments, and I'm gonna leave most of the treatment for Dr. Harry Harden to talk about, but basically there's a safety part of this. The safety part of treatment is that we, you create a team of anesthesiologists, of nurses, of nurse technologists, of physician's assistants, of partners who are used to treating this. And then everything you put in the spine, whether it's screws or tethers, and we'll talk about that, it has to be done what's called, we call it navigation, that everything is done where we see exactly where it's going virtually right at the time that we're doing it. And this safety mechanism, having someone neuromonitoring, making sure the neurologic status is okay, having a team approach that it's the same thing every single time for both sterility, prevent infection, preventing complications like paralysis, and allowing patients to go home really quickly. And I think Dr. Harry Harden deals with this in pain management very early on to get them treated. So I'll leave him to talk about, so what are some of the newer, you talk about some of the newer treatments in treating scoliosis? Yeah, thanks Dr. Feldman, uh, happy to be part of the team. And, you know, we take care of so many different types of scoliosis, but you can really break it down into three things. You can keep an eye on it, and you can put them in a brace or a cast, or they get surgery. And it really depends on how old the patient is and how much growth they have remaining and how big the curve is. And most of the time, they don't need anything. It's a perfectly straight spine or has a very small wiggle, and you just keep an eye on it with these low-dose radiation x-rays every uh, few months to years, depending on patient's age. And if they're super young and have a big curve, sometimes you put them in a cast and that can almost resolve the scoliosis. It's one of the few times when not doing surgery or anything can actually make the scoliosis go away. And then there's all sorts of braces. You know, back in the day, you might have seen on movies and stuff, these crazy big braces. But now we use these more modern techniques with these little braces that have 3D printed technology in them and really help control the scoliosis. And then we also do a lot of specific therapy called Schroth therapy, where it's super important for the patients to get better balance, and sometimes this can even help with the curve itself. 
And then finally, of course, surgery. And this is what Dr. Feldman was talking about. We, this is the tried and tested spinal fusion. And then in the middle, we have what's called vertebral body tethering, where you're actually going through the side and it helps the patient grow and have some motion. And then this one is what's called a magic rod or magnetically controlled growing rod, where it's used for really small and young children to let them grow. And really, we talk about surgery when the curve gets past 50 degrees and ma mainly happens when they're over 10. But like Dr. Feldman was saying, patients only stay in the hospital two to four days at most and they're off of all medications by two weeks and go back to all activities, football, soccer, gymnastics, whatever, by six months if they get a fusion. So here's an example of a good patient that had a spinal fusion. And then this is a patient who had one of those syndromic conditions that Dr. Feldman talked about and had a nice correction of their spine. And this is one we recently did just a month ago of a 20-year-old patient who had a pretty significant curve. And you can see how nicely corrected she is here. And uh, another one similar. And this really gets to the new technology that Dr. Feldman was talking about. This is the O-arm, which helps us get a navigation. And you can see examples of us putting in screws right under computer visualization. So there's no guesswork. There's no radiation while we're doing it. And um, it really puts safety to a whole new level and get, lets you do all sorts of complex cases that beforehand would have been much more difficult. And then this is the tethering, which is also a somewhat new technology, been around probably less than 10 years, but this is what allows the patient to grow and have some flexibility, which uh, we weren't able to do before. And then again, this is the growing rods. This is the patient with the specific syndrome. So they had a different type of growing, but this is a, just a two-year-old and it allows the spine to grow as they, as they continue to mature. Yeah, so I think that's, I think that when we talk about when, when, you know, the mother and the father, or even the child involved in choosing their care, that's what you have to think about. You think about safety first. To me, that's the most important thing, that this is safe, that the child's going to walk into the hospital and walk out of the hospital and be able to do their activities they want to do. So it's not always the best to choose the newest and the brightest new, you know, flower in the pot, but to choose the safest and, and most secure result that you're going to have um, in treating scoliosis. And I think you can't just jump on a bandwagon. So when do we do tethering? We could talk about that a different time. And tethering doesn't really allow more motion, does it not? And, you know, I, I presented a case on, I think, LinkedIn on, on tethering, and one of the, you know, one of the grandfathers or fathers of scoliosis surgery said, well, you have no proof it works, you know, can you tell me in 20 years. Some of that's true, but in this child that we used it on, we used it because they had very stiff hips. So be very stiff hips and I fuse your spine, it makes it very difficult to, to sit and to do activities. So there are reasons to do certain things, but I think for both Dr. Harry Hart and myself, safety is first, you know, making sure everything we do is safe and, and secure. So, you know, keeping the infection rate incredibly low, that you shouldn't be getting infections from spine surgeries and making sure your team is, the team you're using knows how to treat the child before and after, knows how to give very little narcotics so the patient, the adolescent won't become addicted to narcotics after surgery, that their pain management will be quite good, that this is, that they won't need multiple surgeries, but you know, and you're, you're not just starting out, you want to do one and done most of the time. So I think these are the things that we're all looking at. And I think yeah. between, you know, the three of us, myself, Dr. Harry Hart, and Shufflebarger, really creating a team approach to this has really helped us uh, moving forward. So um, we certainly welcome questions. You could email myself, myself, which is dfeldman at paleoinstitute.org, or Dr. Harry Harrod, uh, A. Harry Harrod at, at paleoinstitute.org. You certainly can email any of us or find, you know, ask us questions about all of this. But it really needs to get out there to know that there's not a mystery to scoliosis and it doesn't have to be this great mystery and i think that it's it's pretty tried and true how we go about treating it so you know thanks a lot for joining us yeah today. thanks happy to be part of the team and uh it's been really nice working with you and dr shuffleberger to really get these patients the best care possible using evidence and all your experience so thanks all right happy 2023 everybody and uh We'll see you with the next one. Uh, send suggestions for what topics you want, but we're always open to uh, new ones. And we can go into even, and I may have my salary to hire and discuss, you know, what are the very specific treatments in detail if someone's interested? Like, what does it mean to have a spinal fusion? What does it mean to have a vertebral body tethering? What does that actually mean? So we can talk about that, but I think general ideas are better in, in understanding uh, that scoliosis is not a death sentence. It's and not even a sentence that you have to stop doing all your activities. So uh, happy 2023, everybody.